Oh, so Verinos, and welcome to this week's Friday Fix. In last week's Friday Fix, I, I think I referred to, I know I used the word control at some point or controlling. I can't remember exactly in what context, but I wanted today to talk about how when you get sober, you take control. You take control of so many things. Um, when I think back to when I was drinking, there was so much that was out of my control. And by that, I mean, when I was drinking, things used to happen. Um, and I've made a little list here of all the ways I wasn't in control when I was drinking. So things like blacking out, things like waking up in the morning and not being able to remember going to bed not being able to remember large chunks of the evening or the, the afternoon. Um, and that feeling for me was terrifying. That was absolutely terrifying to wake up and not know where I'd been, who I'd spoken to, what I'd said, what I'd done, um, because my mind would automatically flip to the worst case scenario. So for me, not having even the control to remember what I'd done was absolutely horrifying. So that was for me a terrible loss of control. Um, I would also, um, things would happen like I'd wake up in bed in the morning fully clothed. Um, or I'd wake up wearing a different set of clothes or I'd wake up um, naked or I'd wake up wearing half pyjamas, half clothes. And again, it's linked to that blackout kind of thing. It's not remembering, it's not, it's kind of waking up and thinking, hold on, what am I wearing? Why am I here? Um, how did I get into this state? How did I get undressed? Did somebody undress me? What state was I in? Just, just that feeling of not being in control of even getting undressed or getting dressed, um, not being enough in control to even put myself under the duvet. Um, and again, for me, that was terrifying, waking up and recognizing that I didn't have that amount of basic control over myself. Um, it, it, to me, when I look back at it now, I just think, you know, that, that was my life for so many years that I used to wake up like that. And I used to accept it. I used to, I used to just accept that I didn't have that level of control, which to me now seems crazy. It seems absolutely crazy, but that was my normality at the time. So there was not having control over my memory. There was not having control of the clothes that I woke up in or the state that I woke up in. The bed I woke up in even. There were times where I woke up in beds, in vans, um, on floors. There were times I woke up in cars, in spaces where I would wake up and I would just think, how the actual F did I get here? And, and not have any recollection of that. And of course, with that missing memory and that lack of control, for me, came huge waves of shame. Um, and over time, those huge waves of shame would lead to um, a lowering of self-respect. So each time that happened, my self-respect would be dented a little bit more. Um, because not being in control of your your own reactions, your own responses, your own behaviours, you're not in control of yourself. So, of course, your self-respect is going to go down. And the more your self-respect goes down, the more your self-confidence goes down. And the more you experience anxiety, the more you experience depression and all of these other mental health issues. What else did I have? Yeah, waking up in the wrong clothes, waking up in the wrong place, missing jewellery. That was another one. There are so many um, earrings that I've had over the years. Um, and I remember one bangle specifically. I used to have this amazing, it wasn't expensive. It was a cheap thing. It was when I was in my 20s. But I had this amazingly crafted kind of silver bangle that had been woven with thin um silver wires and 
strewn through the wires were beads. They weren't expensive, um, you know, they weren't like um, sapphires or emeralds or anything like that. They were just glass beads, but they were beautiful colours. They were greens, turquoises, blues, um, very aqua kind of colours. And I loved it. It was thick. It was a big, thick, which you can't see, sort of like that thick on my wrist. And I loved it. I loved this big, chunky statement piece of jewellery. And I used to wear it everywhere. And there was one night, I can't even remember now. Yeah, I do remember who I was with, actually. I was with a male friend. We'd gone down to London. He was a DJ. We'd gone down to London to meet up with some friends of him, his in a pub. And my social anxiety kicked in big time. And so, of course, I started drinking. And my only memory of that evening, um, and it's a really, really hazy, vague memory, is being in some kind of restaurant, some kind of pub, and laughing and joking and drinking and going into the toilet and coming out of the, the toilet and the, the bangle wasn't there anymore. And I remember a really drunken hunt for this bangle. Um, and yeah, I woke up the next day and the bangle wasn't there and it was never seen again. So jewellery, earrings, bangles, necklaces, things that were really valuable to me or important to me, not of any great financial worth, but again, that sense of shame, that lack of control, that lack of self-respect, um, because I wasn't in control of myself, my behaviours, my actions, my thoughts. Um, another thing that I wasn't in control of when I was drinking, that I was a lot less in control of, um, was food and eating, nutrition. Of course, when I was drinking, I would eat anything. Um, whether I was out, whether I was in, if I was having a quiet evening in, I would um, accompany the booze with lots of snacks. So I would treat myself to um, crisps, potato chips, if you're in the US. I would treat myself to cheeses. I would treat myself to chocolate. Um, for me, having a night in with booze was an event in itself, and I would make sure it was an event by um, making sure I had lots of food to go with it. And then when I was recovering from drinking, when I was hung over, because I would be hung over every single time, um, when I was hung over, I wouldn't be able to make healthy, controlled choices about what to put into my body because it was all I could do to survive. So I would eat whatever my body was craving. So if I fancied a fry up, I would have a fry up. If I fancied chocolate, I would have chocolate. If I, and it was usually carbs and it was usually refined carbohydrates, the worst kind of carbohydrates you can have. Um, processed, refined, um, white breads, um, white pasta, that sort of thing. I would basically eat what I had to eat to get through the hungover stage. And of course, then I'd start drinking again in the evening and go back to making, you know, all those unhealthy choices all over again. So I was very much out of control of the food and nutrition for my body. That didn't mean I made, I didn't make good choices some of the time because I did. I did make healthy choices some of the time. I would go through the week um, when I was working, I would not be drinking alcohol. So I would go for days without drinking and it would take me a good few days to kind of feel normal and to feel okay. And when I was feeling normal and okay, which would only be two or three days of the week, if that, um, I would then make healthy choices and I would do workouts and I would cycle and I would do all sorts of things. So I was very active and tried to keep myself as fit as possible um, when I wasn't drinking or hungover. But of course, the accumulative, if, uh, the accumulative effects of all the drinking I was doing were that I was not in control generally of what I was eating and putting into my body. Spending as well, that was another thing. The amount of spending that I did on alcohol and the decisions that I used to make when I was drunk um, about what to spend and whatnot, I was totally out of control with my spending. I had no control over what I spent and what I didn't. And I can't remember off the top of the head, off the top of my head, what the figure is now that I um, what I'm saving now, I'm not drinking, but I remember it was easily between 600, 1,000 pounds a month 
um, the, the amount of money that I'm saving now I'm not drinking. When I actually totted up the amount I was saving, not just on alcohol, but on the foods that I would be um, drinking, uh, the foods that I would be eating when I was drinking, and the choices I would make when I was drunk, and then the foods I would need to eat the next day to get over my hangover, when I totted up everything that I was spending, not only was I spending money on drinks for myself, but I was also making sure I got drinks in for everybody else. So I didn't feel so bad about my own drinking. So not only would I buy all the gins and the wines for me, I would also make sure I had lots of lagers and real ales for Stuart. Um, so yeah, I, and if anybody was coming around, I'd make sure there were loads of wines to choose from. Proseccos, white wines, red wines, rosés, I'd have to make sure there was enough wine for everybody and enough wine specifically for me. So all of that money I was out of control of my spending. And of course, as a result of all the drinking and the hangovers and the poor nutrition, I was out of control generally of myself. I wasn't in control fully of my thinking and my behaviour and everything else. And again, like I've said before, um, that lack of control led for me to lack of self-respect. And the difference now is beyond compare. There is no comparison. Now I'm not drinking. I have no blackouts. Um, my memory is intact. I mean, I've got a generally poor memory anyway. I struggle to remember things and I don't think it's drink related. I think it's a kind of family trait. We've all got rubbish memories. Um, but I'm in control of my thoughts. What of, I'm in control of what I can be in control of. So I can remember what happened in the evening. I can remember going to bed. I'm waking up knowing exactly what time I went to bed. I'm, I'm so much in control that I'm scrubbing my teeth before I go to bed. Um, I'm making sure I get a little reminder on my phone at half past 10 reminding me. No, actually, I think it's 10 o'clock in the evening. I get a reminder on my phone letting me know it's coming up to bedtime. So I'm so much more in control of when I go to bed, what time I go to sleep, what time I wake up in the morning. I'm in control of my sleep. Um, my sleep patterns are much healthier. Um, I'm remembering everything. I'm in control of what I wear in bed. I wake up in the morning in my pyjamas, knowing exactly, uh, you know, remembering that I put them on the evening before and being confident when I wake up that that's what I went to bed in. I'm not losing jewellery. Um, I'm in control of my spending to a degree. Um, I'm in control, much more in control of my spending than I was. And I'm also, I'm also in control of my thoughts and my behaviours. I have that level of self-awareness that I can actually be more in control of myself and my behaviours and my actions. Um, I'm choosing my behaviours rather than acting automatically on autopilot. So my question to you, Soberinos, is what are you more in control of when you're sober? I'd love to hear your answers to that question for today's Friday Fix. And if you're not already in the Go Get Sober Facebook group, do come along and join us. It's easy to find. Just search Go Get Sober and share your stories with us. You couldn't find a more supportive, welcoming, wise, inspirational, motivational and encouraging group of people. We are privileged to have so many lovely people within the Go Get Sober group. So I do recommend you come along and join us if you're not already there. Um, if you want some help taking control over your drinking and taking control of your life back into your own hands, do visit the Go Get Sober website where at the time of recording this video, membership is absolutely free. So just do a search for gogetsober.com and you can sign up for a membership for free and that gets you access to the Go Get Sober Guidance Programme, which is a structured online programme giving you coaching tools, tips and techniques to help you to not just stop drinking and stay sober, but to approach it with a mindset that means you enjoy it, you feel liberated by it. It's a positive lifestyle choice. Um, so if you want some help taking control back, do visit the Go Get Sober website. 
I will look forward to catching up with you all in tomorrow's Saturday share in the Facebook group. But in the meantime, let's go get sober together. Bye for now.